Hey folks, Anthony Shimana here, Senior Consultant with Industrial Logic. Today I'm going to be working through the Gilded Rose refactoring kata. Uh, so this is really one of my favorite uh, code katas to practice refactoring, practice identifying code smells, learning the different automated refactorings that are available in our IDE. And it's one that you can do over and over again and experiment with diff different ways of solving the problem. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we get started? If you want to follow along, the link to the repo will be found in the video description. So let's get started. We'll jump right in and start talking about the requirements. So if you haven't seen Gilded Rose before, if you go to the repo, there is a Gilded Rose text, a Gilded Rose requirements text file, and this will describe um, what the Gilded Rose is. So the Gilded Rose is an in, or you can think of it like a convenience store, and they sell uh, an inven uh, inventory items. And so uh, these items all have some common characteristics. They all have a sell-in value, which is the number of days you have to sell the item. So you can think of this as more like an expiration. They also have a quality, which tells us how valuable the item is. At the end of each day, the system lowers both values for each item. So let's, we'll kind of keep going. There's some more uh, specifics about the system here. So once the sell-by date has passed, right, or the sell-in date has passed, our quality degrades twice as fast. The quality of an item can never be negative. Let's skip over age debris for a moment here. The quality of an item is also never more than 50. Then we have a few special case items. So we have this aged debris. It increases in quality the older it gets. We have sulfurous, which is this legendary item. It never has to be sold. It never decreases in quality. Then we have backstage passes which also, like age Brie, also increases in quality. Uh, however, quality increases by two when there's 10 days or less, and by three when there's five days or less, but quality drops to zero after the concert. So that is already in the system. Uh, that's already working, and I've written microtests to cover all of that logic so that we can jump right in and start refactoring the code, and we'll look at that in a minute. So our job here is to introduce a new item, and this is a conjured item. Conjured items degrade in quality twice as fast as normal items. So what our job here is today is to clean up this code, refactor it so that we can safely and more easily introduce this conjured item. Uh, there's a few different names for this type of refactoring. Martin Fowler calls it preparatory refactoring. In our industrial logic e-learning, we call the refactoring technique nesting. Uh, probably my favorite is uh, Kent Beck. He says, when faced with a difficult change, make the change easy. Warning, this may be hard. Then make the easy change. So a few different terms for really the same kind of thing, this preparatory refactoring. So let's go in. Let's take a quick look at the tests. We don't have to look too closely at the tests because we're really going to be focusing on refactoring. But let's run them. You can see they run quite fast. They should run, let's see, yeah, they, this, they ran in about 200 milliseconds. So the goal is going to be that we're going to keep running these continuously. We're going to be trying to make very small changes and uh, running our tests in between each one to ensure that we're preserving behavior. So let's get started looking at Gilded Rows. I'll zoom in a bit here. So I think it's, it's often helpful when we look at this code to look at some of the different code smells we see. So certainly long method is one. We see uh, com uh, conditional complexity. We can see how, uh, if you just look at the tabs here, all of the conditional complexity that we have here, which makes it really hard to understand. I see some duplication here and here. So there's some duplication as well. I also see primitive obsession, right? We're switching on the name of this item to decide what to do with the item. And these are just strings, and you can see the strings have to be identical. And probably related to that, what I think is, is one of the biggest issues here is that uh, I see the switch statement smell, or it's been uh, in the latest version of refactoring, it's called repeated switches. But the idea here is we're switching on type, right? The name is a type of item for these special cases. 
to decide what to do with it. And we could replace this with a polymorphic solution to make it easier to work with. And I think that will be my approach today is to try to make this a polymorphic solution. If you think about an inventory system, we would likely be adding and removing inventory fairly often. So we'd want to make that as simple and safe as possible. And it's very clear right now that is not the case, right? So let's see what we can do with that. So the first thing I typically do when working with legacy code is take a pass through the code to eliminate noise. So this is work that's it's safe. I'm not thinking too much about it, looking for things like dead code where the IDE is telling me it's dead code or looking at uh, commented out code or noise comments, things like that that we can quickly clean up. I don't see a lot of that here before we get started, but there are a couple things that I do see. So first, I don't like that we're indexing into this items array everywhere. It's a bit noisy. You can see this squiggle here on the for loop is telling us we can do something with that. So if I bring up the context uh, actions menu here, it says I can replace with enhanced for, and we'll do that. And let's run the tests. Okay, excellent. So that just made that uh, quite, quite a bit simpler, uh, not as noisy to read. So let's scroll down here. There's not much else I could do. The only other thing here is I see there's an orange squiggle here too. So I will bring up my context menu and it says replace with zero. So let's take that and run the tests. Great, so I think that's, that's a good start. The next thing I'd like to do is start breaking down this main public method is where all of the logic is and it's called update quality. And I'd like to start breaking this down into a composed method for a couple of reasons. When we refactor legacy code, we wanna make small steps. So if I can break the problem down into a much smaller pieces, I can address those uh, issues in each of the in each of the private methods separately. So it helps me break a big, big problem down into a smaller problem. But also if we're thinking about having a polymorphic solution, I'm imagining that I want to refactor to something like a template method pattern, right? So there's a there's a base class that has a template, right? An algorithm or a workflow for updating these inventory items. And then our custom cases, right, our cases where we have the special logic, they can extend that base class, right? Subclass the base class, and they can have the specialized logic. So they can override specific parts that they need to, right, of that template. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm seeing here. So I'd like to extract that out. There's, there's probably an algorithm, right, or a workflow here that we aren't seeing yet. So why don't we get started there? The first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to extract out inside this for loop. So let's see these larger methods. It's sometimes hard to match up your braces. It's either, let's see if this one is it. Did I get it? Yes, excellent. So this is called update quality. I don't have a great name for this yet. I am fairly certain this is doing more than updating quality. For now, I'm just gonna call this update item. It's not a great name, but we'll come back to that. And let's run our tests. Okay, great. So now at this point, I'm just dealing with a single item instead of a collection of items. And now let's start seeing how we can break this down further. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to, I'm trying to not get bogged down in all of this conditional complexity. I'm looking at these assignment operations, looking at the left-hand side to see what we're doing. So here we're updating quality, here we're updating quality, here we're updating quality, here we're updating quality, and then here we're updating sell-in. So I think at that point, that's where we switch. So let's extract all of this out and call this update quality. Run our tests. I'm gonna be running the tests between every change I make, unless I forget, 
just to make sure that I have not introduced a behavior change. And if we do and we see a failing test, we can just undo and retreat quickly and get back to, to working, um, getting back to where all of our tests pass. Okay, so the first thing that update item does is update quality, and then it does some other things. So clearly, this is not a great name. Long methods often lie to us. So let's, let's change this. We're looping over items for this now. So I think for now, let's call this update inventory. Again, if we have a better name later, if we come up with a better name later, we can change it. Okay, great. So coming back here, looking at this, um, this is just setting our selling value. So let's extract this out and let's call this update expiration. Okay, so now here we're looking at if selling value is less than zero, we're back to updating quality here. So this is really the um, expired processing, right? So if we have any expired items, this is where we deal with them. So let's extract this out. Did not get it. Oh, did I? Maybe I didn't get the whole block. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. And we will call this process expired. And run our tests. Okay. So we're starting to see our template emerge here, right? So really, this was called update quality, but it's updating quality, it's updating expiration, and then it's also processing expired items. So I'm just looking at this last process expired method. So I don't, I don't love this. I actually think, I think this bit is important because this is the bit that's telling us if an item is, is expired. And I think I'd like this, I don't want to kind of bury this down in this method. Again, this method I can see will be the one that will likely push over at, into our base class that will be our template, right? Our kind of algorithm for updating an item. So I think I'd like this to be more obvious. So I think I'd like to see this in this method. So let's undo that extract method. run our tests, make sure that we're, we're still in a, in a green state. Okay, we are. So instead, I just want to extract out what's inside here. And let's call this process expired and run our tests. Okay, I think I like this better now this is at a different abstraction level than the rest of the method, so I'm gonna I'm gonna extract this out and call this is expired and run my tests. Okay, now I'm I'm really uh, liking this a lot better. So I think right now I'm just gonna move these methods around so they're kind of following in order of this method. So let's go find update quality. We'll move that up. Then we'll move update expiration. Uh, just went a little one too far there. So update quality, update expiration. If is expired, process expired. Okay. So now that we have that composed method, I'm going to start addressing each one of these individually. So we'll start with update quality. Update quality looks like it's the longest of these methods. And now what I want to do here is I'm thinking about pushing this over to a base class, right? The, this method over to a base class and then shifting 
this switching on type to a polymorphic solution. So I'm thinking about what's the best way to do that to make that refactoring easier. So the approach that I would like to take here with each of these uh, private methods that make up our composed method is regardless of how much conditional complexity is still here, I want the outer conditions to be switching on the name. And then that's going to make it easier for me to then move that code, refactor that code into a subclass polymorphic solution. So if aged Brie, else if backstage pass, else if sulfurous, else whatever our standard item case. That's how I would like this to proceed. <clears throat> okay, so let's see how we can get there with this code. So the first thing I want to do here is um, get rid of the not condition. So we can do that if we open up our uh, context menu on if, we can invert the if condition. Let's run our tests. Okay. So we have an if age brie or backstage passes, and then we're checking another condition on backstage passes here. That seems a little odd to me, but before we deal with that, let's deal with this or. And I'm thinking about a way that I can split this. I don't want uh, aged brie or backstage passes. I'd like to see if aged brie, else if backstage passes. So I'm thinking about a way that I can split that safely and being able to run our tests in between each step. So the approach I'm going to take, there's a refactoring technique called isolate, improve, inline, the three I's. And the idea is we can extract a method out to isolate some code. We can improve that code or make it easier for us to improve the code around it. And then we can decide, does it make sense to inline it back or keep it? Sometimes we can simplify something so much that it doesn't really make sense to have its own private method anymore. So I think we can use that technique here. So let's extract out everything that's inside here, inside this uh, leg of the conditional. And I think that, I think it's there that gets us to it. And we'll call this update quality for aged free and tickets. It's not a great name, but I'm okay with that because we're gonna end up, we're gonna end up inlining it back in. Okay, so all our tests still pass. So the simplest thing I can do to split this is to just copy this if statement, paste here, make this an elf if, and what I can do is make this first one just aged brie. So we can just delete the second part of that or, and then here make this one just backstage passes. And now let's run our tests. Excellent. So now what we can do is inline these and improve them individually. So we'll start with this first one. I'll inline. Now this pop-up here, I know it's a little bit small. It gives us a few different options here. The first one is inline all and remove the method. Well, I don't want to do that yet. I want to do these one at a time. So I'm going to pick this third option is inline this only and keep the method. So let's do that and run our tests. And now we can start cleaning this up. So if aged Brie, and then inside of here we have an if backstage passes. But we know we have this else if here to deal with backstage passes, and an item can't be aged Brie and backstage passes at the same time. So I think for this, it could should be as simple as just getting rid of this. So here, let's see, we can comment this out for now. Let's rerun our tests. I believe they should still pass. Great. Okay, they do. So now we can just get rid of all of this code. I'm sure I didn't delete an extra, an extra curly brace here. Okay, good. All right, so now let's deal with backstage passes. So I will inline, and now this time I will choose the first one, inline all, and remove the method. You can see as long as I don't forget, I'm gonna be trying to run those tests in between each of these steps. Okay, so else if backstage passes, then we have an if backstage pass in here. Well, we already know we're in the backstage pass kind of leg of the conditional. So I think we can just delete this, delete one of the braces here. We'll reformat 
and then let's run. Okay, great. FH free, else if backstage passes. Else if. Okay, now again, I'd like to get sulfurous on the outside. And I think these are unrelated. So let's see, I'm going to try to just move this line up and let's run our tests. Excellent. So those, those still pass. So now let's see. So one of the things we can also do here is we can merge else if statements. So let's see if we can, what this looks like. So I'm going to choose merge else if. Run my tests. And now we still have this not. So let's try to invert the if. Not just split it again for us. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Okay. Now I think if we do this, you can see there's an else here. We, we can invert the if again, but we can't merge the else if. And the reason for that is there's an if statement here and we just return this does not have an else if, right? So there's no reason to have an else if if we just return from this statement here. So I think we should be able to do that. That should be functionally equivalent. And now I think we'll be able to merge. So let's try else if, run our tests. Okay, I think this is looking good. Right, so let's see if, if we've gotten into the pattern that we want. So if aged brie, else if backstage passes, else if sulfurous, else if our standard item. So I'm happy with this. This we can work with. So let's let's move on to that next method now. Okay, update expiration. This one's quite small, but again, we can let's invert this if. Run our tests. Okay, this is a bit nitpicky. Uh, instead of doing item sell in equals item sell in minus one, we can just do item sell in minus minus. Let's run that and see how that goes. Okay, perfect. You know, it's a minor thing. Someone might not even want to refactor that. It just simplifies the statement a little bit. Okay, let's keep going. If is expired, I think this one is fine. Okay, so now let's look at process expired. Again, maybe not as tangled as update quality, but still you know, kind of similar here. Okay, so let's start by inverting this if and see what that gives us. Okay, if aged free. Okay, before I go any further, this item quality is less than 50, and then we increment item quality. We did that several times here that we haven't extracted yet. So why don't we start by, before we go too much further, let's get rid of this duplication. So I'm gonna extract this out. I will just call this increase quality. The original signature, okay. so. Uh, we get this process duplicates pop up here. So let's, we'll let IntelliJ replace the other duplicated locations it found. We can run tests, make sure that it did that right. Okay, great. I'm gonna move this down. I'll keep moving it down. Yeah, move it down to the bottom. It's kind of a lower level than these than the other methods that make up the composed method, right? It gets called from the composed method, so I'll move that to the bottom. Now you can see this is very similar, but it didn't pick up in our replacement because we're not closing out the if here. But if you see, we go from setting quality, right, to now we're checking against sell in. So I actually think we should be able to do this delete one of these. Let's rerun our tests. 
Excellent. Okay. So now at this point, I think we can just replace this with increase quality. Awesome. Okay. Just reformat that a bit. Okay, so let's go back down to where we left off and process expired. Okay, so we fixed that. Let's see what happens if we merge these. Okay. Item quality is greater than zero. We check if it's not sulfurous, and then we do quality minus one. Now that looks familiar. You can see we're doing that here, except we have sulfurous here in the middle. But again, these are different checks. Let's see if we can let's see if we can actually swap these. Uh, that's a alt shift up, I think. Uh, hang on, let's not do that yet. I want to see if inverting these ifs makes it easier to work with. Let's let's check this one. Okay. Okay, I like that better because now we have if aged brie, else if backstage passes. So I like this approach a little bit better. Okay, so let's see if we can swap these two now. Run our tests, see if that was safe. Excellent, okay, it was safe. So I think we could actually split this out if we look, that is duplicated here, and that's kind of like an analog to increase quality. This is decrease quality. Let's extract that out. Let's call this decrease quality. Keep our original signature. And it's going to, excellent, it's going to find the other place for us and replace it. And let's run our test make sure that that worked. All right, excellent. So let's move. Ah, oh, whatever, they can, I'll just move decrease quality below, increase quality. All right, let's see what we can do here. Still in this process expired, we can merge these. And we have this not, let's see what we can do. Let's try to invert the if condition. Okay, let's see if we put an else here. Let's run the tests. Okay, excellent. Now let's see if we can if we can merge the else if here. All right, there we go. That I like the look of this now. Great. Okay, so our test pass process expired if aged brie, else if backstage pass, else if sulfurous, else our base case, right? Our, our standard item case. Okay, so I am happy with this. I think this is in a state now that we will be able to subclass more easily. Okay, so just thinking about the next steps here. So I think at this point, we're ready to create that, um, that, that base class. So ideally, I would make it item. There's one thing I didn't mention in the instructions. So let's jump back over one of the issues that we have to deal with is they're telling us that we're not allowed to alter the item class. So ideally I would item would be the kind of base object. Since we can't do that, I think the next best thing is we can wrap item in a class that will be the kind of the base of of our inheritance hierarchy. So we'll start here. We're going to use another pattern called caller creates where we just create the class 
the first place where we want to use it and then let the ID create it for us. So let's call this new inventory item and we'll pass it an item. And you can see it's, it's red there because it doesn't exist, but we can just open our context menu and say create class. Then gilded rows. Sure, we'll add it to get. Zoom in a bit here. So we don't need it yet, but we could um, alt enter on item and say create field for parameter item. We know we're going to need it eventually. Okay, great. So let's go back to our gilded rows. Okay, so what I want to start doing is I want to move all of these methods over to inventory item and then start pushing uh, the specifics down, right? The special cases down. So in order to do that, we're going to need a local variable. So we'll introduce local variable. That's a fine name. Okay. So I want to start moving these. And what we're going to do is we'll go all the way down. So we'll move the, the methods that are the deepest, right? So decrease quality and increase quality, they get called by the other private methods that are part of what's going to become our template method. We'll move those first and we'll just kind of come up moving all of these over to the inventory item. So if I do an F6 here, you can see we just have item as a target for the move. And you can see we're passing that in as a parameter. So we don't, it, the, the ID is telling us it can't move, safely move this method onto inventory item. So the trick here is if you pass in inventory item as a parameter, then we can move it. So what, what I plan on doing is we'll pass inventory item all the way down into all of these methods, and then we'll just start moving them over to inventory. We'll come back up. So let's get started. We'll use caller creates again here. We, um, we can just add inventory item as a second parameter here and bring up our context menu and just say admin inventory item. Because we're not using it yet, all of this should, all of our code should continue to pass, or all our tests rather should continue to pass. And so yeah, let's just keep pushing it down. Okay, so bear with me, this'll be a little boring. Now we have process expired. Okay, excellent. All right, so now let's see what do we have left. Okay, we do have increased quality, so we can pass the inventory item down here. Okay, great. And we have decreased quality. I think that's it. Here is just giving us a default value since we're calling it in more than one place and we want that default value to be called inventory item. Okay, great. They all pass. So now at this point, let's start all the way at the bottom with increase and decrease and we'll come up moving them over now to the inventory item. We should be able to do that. Okay. inventory item. Now I'm going to make these protected as we move them over. We can always make them private if we don't need need them to be protected, but because we're creating an inheritance hierarchy, I think it makes sense for these to be protected. And we could do that as a separate step as well if we wanted to, uh, but the IDE does it for us. So uh, my position on that is if the IDE will uh, do multiple things in one step, we can easily undo it. So I go ahead and let the IDE do that for me. Perfect. Okay, so now we can do process expired, inventory item protected. Just bear with me, it's going to be a little boring for another minute or so here.
So especially when you're doing these kind of redundant motions, it's easy to make a mistake. So it's good to run our tests in between each one. Or I should say repeated, uh, repeated motions here. Refactor. Move up to equality. Oh, slip, my finger slipped there. Okay, let's see. Excellent. Okay, so now we're at this update item method. This is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be the public method because this is going to be our template here. So I want to move this over and make it public, but I don't like the name update item. So I think if we look at our requirements here, it does talk about at the end of each day, our system lowers both values for every item. So it's kind of like the a daily update. So for lack of a better name for now, I'm going to call this daily update. Again, renames are, are quick and safe, so we can rename it as many times as we want. So let's, why don't we call it that for now, and we can always rename it. Now we'll move this to inventory item, but this time I'm going to make it public and refactor. Let's run our tests. Okay, great. So I think this is looking good now. At this point, I think we could inline this. Now something that looks a little bit funny here is we're looping over all the items and we're passing the items in here, right? The each item we're passing it in because inventory is wrapping that item, but then we're also passing it in here. So I think that's probably the first thing to clean up over an inventory item. So let's go over to inventory item. First thing I want to do is kind of move, let's move these methods around. So kind of bear with me. I'm going to move decrease all the way to the bottom, kind of like what we did in the Gilded Rose once we created the composed method. Let's move increase quality all the way down. We can move it just above increase quality. Daily update is our public method, so I want that all the way at the top. Okay, and then update quality should be next. And then if And then just update expiration goes. Yeah, here we go. I think this is at update quality, update expiration if is expired process expired. Okay. All right. So I think we're ready to start creating our subclasses. So the first thing that I want to do before we introduce our subclasses, actually, wait, we did say we wanted to clean up the item first. So let's let's do that first. We can see here that we're passing item in everywhere here, and we don't need to be doing that because we're taking the item, right? The item's already a field. So let's start again. We'll start at the bottom. And let's start removing them. So control F6 to change signature. I'm going to remove item, refactor. Now it's going to say, that the item is used in the method body, but we know that there's already a field. So let's just continue and run our tests. Okay, excellent. So we'll do the same thing. Remove item, refactor, run our tests. Perfect. So we'll just keep working our way up. Control F6, remove item. So just bear with me as I work through these.
All right. So now if we go to daily update, you can see item is no longer used. So we can just open our context menu here and save delete and run our tests. All right, excellent. So now I think we're at the point where we can start creating the subclasses. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna wrap the creation of the inventory item, right? Because we, we don't want Gilded Rose to have to worry about what type of item am I creating, right? We're, somewhere we need to create the concrete objects. So my thought is, at least for now, we can make like a creation method, a static creation method on inventory item. We could always move it to a factory class at some point. But I think that's a, maybe the a simplest place for us to start. So let me start by extracting just the creation point out. And we'll call this create. Run our tests. And I'm envisioning this as like a static creation method on the inventory item. So I think because there's no state here, I think we can just make this static. Rerun our tests. Great. And now we should be able to move in. Because it's static, you can see we can move it wherever we'd like. So I'll move it to inventory item and we'll let it be public and we'll refactor. So Gilda Rose doesn't care. It's just dealing with inventory items, calling daily update on each inventory item. Okay, so now let's see, where's the best place? I would say for now, I guess let's put it above the constructor. Okay, so now at this point, I think the kind of the recipe going forward is let's create a subclass. We'll create an instance of it in our creation method, and then we can move the logic over to it, right? So what we can do is we can just look through here, and the first one is age debris that we're going to want to switch on. So I think let's make this a constant before we get started. And that's fine. We can call it age debris. Let's make sure it should have grabbed the other. Yeah, excellent. Got the other locations. Okay. So it's dealing, not really dealing, we're not really dealing with the primitive obsession smell, but at least we're making it a little bit better by having a constant for that string here. Okay. So we can subclass by clicking on the class name, opening our context menu and say create subclass age free. Great. We can zoom in here. And here we can say, yeah, item dot name equals h three. Oh, let's see what I missed that. Turn new h three passing an item, and we're not we haven't moved any functionality into the into the subclass yet, so this should all still pass, and they do. Okay, so now we have aged debris, and we can start moving functionality to it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come to update quality first. I see it's switching on aged debris. I'm just going to copy what's inside the if aged debris statement. And then from here, I can click on update quality, bring up my context menu, say override. I'm going to delete what's in here and just paste oh, coming back to the inventory item. And now I can delete this case. Let's run our test. Excellent. So we're just methodically trying to make these methods smaller by pushing the code that's inside that conditional statement down into the subclass, just kind of methodically working our way through. So now let's keep going here. Okay, here's our next one. So again, we can just copy what's inside of the if aged brie. Override process expired. Delete. Paste over what we copied. And again, get rid of that condition. Excellent. Okay. So I think that's it.
So let's start with the next one. Looks like the next one is backstage passes. So we'll just follow that same, that same pattern. Create subclass, backstage passes. Store Y to get. Zoom in a bit there. Maybe we can run our tests. Now here we can say, oh, let's let's extract. Let's extract the constant. We'll just call these backstage passes. Okay, good. Looks like we got the other ones. Let's run our tests. Okay, great. So now we'll just again follow the same thing we did before. Here's backstage passes. So we can just copy everything that's inside backstage passes. Override update quality. We're in our backstage passes now. We can paste in here. Ah, let's undo that for a moment. Yeah, let's undo. Let's go back to inventory item. Did a graceful retreat there. Let's run our tests. Okay, excellent. So what I saw there and why I retreated is because item is not accessible in the subclasses. So let's make this protected. Run our tests. Okay, perfect. So let's try that again. You know, if we work in these very small steps, we can easily undo and kind of try another approach. Okay, so again, copy everything inside backstage passes. Alt enter, override update quality. There we go. Now we can paste in here. Go back to inventory item. Run our tests. Great, okay. Process expired, again, copy here. Override in backstage passes. Go back to our inventory item. Great. They all pass. Okay. All right. So let's let's handle sulfurous now. So we can make this constant. We'll just call it sulfurous. on inventory item, bring up our context action menu, create subclass, so theorists, have a hard time with that one. All right. So I could make this a switch statement. It doesn't bother me all that much since it's kind of just in this creation method. So I'm okay leaving it for now. Okay, so let's look at Sulfurous. Let's walk through Sulfurous. Okay, so if it's Sulfurous, just return. Okay, so let's override update quality. And so that's just, you know, don't do anything. So we'll just do that back to our inventory item. I think we can delete here and look at that. So what's left here is just whatever our standard item case is. So let's run our tests. 
Okay, great. Date expiration. We want to make sure we pick sulfurous. Again, that was a no op, right? It was just a return. So we'll do that. Come back here, delete this. We're in our tests. Excellent. And look at this. Our last case again here is a no op. So we'll override process expired. We are in sulfurous. Oh, that's not going to pass. Oh, wait. Yeah, it should. It should still pass. Um, but we didn't finish. We have to come back here and finish an inventory item. Now we can get rid of everything. Now we're on them. Okay, awesome. Look at this. So at this point, there's no more reference to types. So we've effectively done the refactoring, right? Replace type code with polymorphism. There's no more type code here inside of inventory item. Okay, just a couple things to, that I want to clean up here before we go and then implement our conjured item. These are minor, but here we can do plus plus. Just simplifies the statement a little bit. Again, I wouldn't be, if you prefer, you know, minus equals or minus one, I'm not too upset about that either way. But it's something minor, but it's something we can do. Okay. And I think I think for now I'm going to keep the creation method here. But the one thing I do think is a little bit odd is these names are here in the inventory item. I don't really want the inventory item to have to know these names. So I think I'd like to move these over to their classes. So we can move them because they're static. Um, we can just move them it's public static. We can move them right over. So we'll move this to oops, got a caps lock on there for a moment. Aged Brie, refactor. Now the name is odd, right? Aged Brie, Aged Brie. So we can rename that to just, I, I would say item name or name is probably fine because we're on a class that inherits from an inventory item. Okay, and let's do the same for these others backstage passes. Let's move back to backstage passes. Come on, there we go. We can rename this, just name is fine. Great, and then we'll do the same with sulfurous. Move sulfurous. And then rename that to name. Okay, great. So we move that. They're all in their own class now. We could move this creation method, but let's just leave it here for now. Uh, just to move on to the interesting, more interesting part, I guess. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's go look at Gilded Rose. I mean, it doesn't get... Gilded Rose is not, doesn't get much simpler than that, right? It is just responsible for looping over all of our inventory and calling daily update on each of them. Okay. So I think we're ready. So let's implement our conjured item now. So instead of having all of that complex logic that we would have had to figure out where do we inject that conjured uh, logic, and it would be in a few, you know, several different places, Let's now test drive adding our conjured item. So we'll go to our test. We'll start with whatever that our first case is. We'll say conjured items degrade in quality twice as fast. Okay. So since we didn't deal with that primitive obsession, these are still strings. And I think that's okay for now. Okay, and we'll say 
So in 10, quality 20, just to work with some different numbers. formatting there a bit, update inventory, and I'm going to say assert that item.quality is equal to, right, so if we start at 20, we would expect this to be 18. But since this is our, our first test, let's, let's also test the other attribute, right, let's test the I think we can assert against the cell in as well here. Kind of, I'm thinking about whether that should be a, sep a another test or not. We could we could always extract it out, but cell is just going to decrease by by one. So that's what we're expecting. Um, I don't always do assert a single assert per test. I think that's a bit extreme. But we could have separated this out where we just asserted against selling in one test and quality in another. But for now, I'm okay leaving this here. So let's run, let's run all of our tests. Um, yeah, I can click here and say run all of them. Or no, actually that just clicked on the one, right? Yeah, so I think we can we can run all of them from here. Okay, we have one failure, expecting 19 to be 18, which makes sense. If we come back down here, <clears throat> the standard item will just decrease by one. Okay, so let's get this working. So if we come back to inventory item, we can create our subclass, conjured. Here we can say if item dot name equals if we get this exactly right, we'll come back and make that we'll make that a constant at a later step, right? Let's do that as a refactoring step, right? We're just trying to get to green right now so as quickly and safely as possible. Got my new keyword. Okay, great. Now, what can we do? What's the simplest thing we can do? Well, I think if we're, our test right now is just failing because of quality. So the simplest thing I think we can do is let's override update quality here in Conjured, and what if we call decrease quality twice and run our tests? Okay, excellent. So that got all of our tests passing, but we're not done yet. If we go back to our requirements, Conjured items degrade in quality twice as fast as normal items, but we haven't dealt with the case where they are expired. So let's 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 write a test for that. Conjured items degrade in quality by four if expired. Right? They they degrade twice as fast when they're expired, and in general, they expire twice as they they degrade in quality twice as fast because they're conjured. So it should be by four. Okay. So we'll make cell in zero. We can still make quality twenty. Oh, 
update inventory. And here, now this time I don't, we've already asserted sell and I don't think we need, there's no special case for sell in now. So I don't think we need to do an another assertion there, but we will assert item quality is equal to 16, right? 20 minus four. expecting 17 to be 16. Okay, so now what we, can we do? What is the simplest thing we can do to get conjured working? Well, I don't, this is not the right place to do the override, I don't think. So let's go back to inventory item. What if instead we override decrease quality? So let's do override decrease quality. Let's move that to conjured. For now, let's comment this out. That way, if we need it, we can always bring it back. And let's say here, item dot quality equals, and we can say the max of z. No, 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 not right. Don't need to do that yet. Here, we can just say item quality minus equals two. Right, decreased quality now just degrades by two. So let's let's run that. Let's see what happens. Okay, awesome. So let's delete this. And I think I was getting ahead of myself, but I didn't have a test for it yet. So now let's go write that other test. So I think there's one more test that we need to write, and that will be. Hundred items can quality can never be negative. All right, so that was a bit that we lost because there was that guard clause in the de in the decrease quality. So since we're overriding that, let's write an explicit test for that here. So whatever song can be ten. Quality can be, um, oh, no, don't need to name the variable. Quality can be one. Sort that item dot quality is equal to zero. Now I believe this should fail. So let's see what happens. Let's run all of them. You can see I'm not just running the one test. Also, I'm, I'm running all of them. We don't want to introduce uh, a change that's going to make another test fail. So we want to run all of them as much as possible. Excellent. Yeah, expect the ne negative one to be zero. So now, kind of, when I was getting ahead of myself here. Let's go to our conjured item. And instead, I think we can, here we can say item quality equals, here we can do the math max of zero and item quality minus, item quality minus two. Oh, finger slipped. Let's run our tests. Awesome. Let's delete that. Great. So I think there's just one more thing I want to do. Let's go back to the inventory item. We didn't refactor this out yet. So all our tests are passing, so we can do that now. So we can make that a constant, call it conjured. That's fine. I guess I could have just called it name. There's only one of them here now. Actually, no, let's cancel. We'll move it first. Move it to conjured. Oh, here's just conjured, conjured. Now, 
we can rename it just to name. Let's run all our tests. Okay, great. So let's take a quick look at where we ended up, right? So inventory item, it does have this creation method that we could move out of here into its own factory if we wanted to. We have our public daily update, which is our template method. Update quality, update expiration, if is expired, process expired. We have the default behavior here for a standard item. And then we have aged debris, the overrides for aged debris, the overrides for backstage passes, sulfurous, which is an example of the null object pattern. So it just it, it overrides with no ops for everything. And our new conjured item. Excellent. So that is we were able to test drive all of those changes for the new conjured item. So that's my implementation of the Gilded Rose Kata. Thank you all for following along. If you made it this far, uh, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed it. And feel free to, uh, to let me know if you did. And I'll keep making these screencasts. Take care, everybody.